Do I actually need to install low smoke cables and where does it say that I do? It's a question that comes up all the time on site and in design meetings. Some installers fit them everywhere and others say it's overkill. So who's right? You've probably seen the term low smoke zero halogen on a specification or a drawing and it's something you'd probably find on projects using modular wiring systems like this one from Flex 7. But when does it actually apply? Do you need to install it everywhere or just in certain parts of the job? And what happens if the specification doesn't mention it at all? And here's a question that we're going to come back to later in the video is LSF the same as LSNH? Because that's a question that still catches a lot of people out. In a fire, most of the danger doesn't come from the flames themselves. It comes from smoke and gases as materials burn. Building Regulations Part B makes that clear. It says that in the early stages of a fire, it's not the flames, but the noxious gases that are the biggest risk. When PVC burns, it releases hydrogen chloride gas. As soon as that gas mixes with moisture, it becomes hydrochloric acid. That acid attacks metals, damages electrical equipment and burns the airways when inhaled. So cable selection isn't just about voltage drop, it's also about safety in the event of a fire. The King's Cross Underground Fire in 1987 proved how dangerous cables and smoke can be in the event of a fire. Thick, corrosive fumes spread through the tunnels, making it nearly impossible for people to escape and firefighters to locate the source of the fire. And that incident changed the way we think about materials and cables that we install in public buildings. It pushed the industry to look very closely at the cables buried behind walls and above ceilings. Modern buildings nowadays rely on complex wiring systems. Offices, hospitals, transport hubs and schools all use modular wiring systems and plug-in control systems. These systems sit above escape routes and occupied spaces, which means the cables they use must meet strict smoke and fume limits. This is why Flex 7 only use low smoke, no halogen cable across their entire range of modular wiring systems. Their lighting connection systems already meet the safety level expected for these environments. Low smoke and non-halogen cables behave very differently in a fire. They produce only a light grey smoke and no corrosive halogen gases. That means clearer escape routes, less damage to the building and more time to get people out safely. Now you might think that this sounds like something you only need in a hospital or an airport, but actually the requirements go much further than that. Building Regulations Part B, BS7671 and the Construction Products Regulations all make reference to smoke and fume performance. Together, they set the expectation for when low smoke cables are required. Part B focuses on escape routes and public areas. It says that materials in those areas should limit the amount of smoke and toxic gases. That means any cables installed in lobbies, stairwells and corridors, or shared access spaces, should be low smoke and halogen free. BS7671 builds on that. Regulation 422.2.1 says that wiring systems in escape routes must be selected and installed so they don't contribute to the spread of fire and smoke. The construction product regulations classifies cables to how they react in a fire. You'll see this as a Euro class rating on the packaging or the data sheets. The letters show us how much smoke, toxic gases and flaming droplets a cable produces. Public and shared spaces are expected to meet those higher standards. So where will you actually find these cables? Almost everywhere where people gather and move through. Schools, hospitals, offices, hotels, shopping centres, transport hubs, care homes and data centres. If people need to escape or if that cable needs to keep operating in an emergency then it should be low smoke, no halogen. Because Flex 7 already use low smoke, no halogen throughout their entire range, the installation automatically meets those low smoke, zero fume standards. So now we know where and why it's needed, but how do you actually check it's been called up on a project? Well, you'll usually find that requirement listed in one of three places. The general specification, the cable schedule, or the fire strategy section of the design. In the specification, you might see a note which says, all wiring systems within escape routes shall be of a type of low smoke, no halogen cable. Sometimes it will even reference a specific standard like BSEN 50525 or list a Euro class rating. On the cable schedule it might be written as LSZH, LSHF or LSNH. If you can't find it, 
check for its reaction to fire class or the CPR marking. And if it still isn't clear, be sure to check with the designers before ordering. And it's also good practice to record what you've used on site. Label the containment or add the cable type to the as build documentation so the next person knows that the installation meets those strict safety standards. And if you've ever come across confusing specifications like this or been involved in a project where the cable type wasn't clear, we'd love to hear from you. Send your questions or examples to Will it trip at efix.co.uk. We pick one every week for our Q&A of the day and we could feature your question in a future episode. Okay, so while that covers where we might find the information, there's another part of the story that often gets missed. It's actually what is installed above the ceiling. Any cable forming part of an escape route should be low smoke and halogen free. That includes lighting cables, power and distribution cables running through corridors and stairwells. Even if they don't supply emergency systems, standard PVC still creates heavy smoke when it burns. And then there are the life safety systems. Fire systems and emergency lighting should not only be low smoke halogen free, but should also be fire resistant as well. BS 5839 and BS 5266 set out those requirements. Those systems need to keep working long enough so people can evacuate safely. But here's the part that's easy to miss. It's not only the fixed wiring that needs attention. Ceiling voids in offices, hospitals, airports and classrooms are full of flexible plug-in connectors. Modular wiring systems like this one from Flex7 are used to save time and make reconfigurations easier. But those leads could often run across escape routes and open areas. If they were made of PVC or LSF, they could release toxic smoke in the event of a fire. But by using low smoke non-halogen cable across their entire range, Flex7 makes sure that their cables meet the same safety standard as the rest of the fixed wiring. So even the parts you don't see are designed to protect the people below. But now you might be wondering what is the difference between those low smoke terms anyway? We've mentioned LSF and LSNH but they aren't the same. LSF or low smoke and fume cable just produces less smoke than PVC cable but it still releases halogens. LSNH cable also known as LSZH or LSHF contains no halogens and it also produces much less smoke. And that's the difference between something that produces a lot less smoke and something that eliminates toxic fumes altogether. And that's why systems like Flex7 are such a practical solution. Flex7 recognized those risks that were posed by fumes and emissions. And that's why they adopted low smoke non-halogen cable across their entire range. Whether their systems are installed in offices, transport hubs, hospitals and schools, every plug, lead and box meets the same compliance safety standards. It's a consistent approach that saves designers time and gives installers confidence and peace of mind that everything above the ceiling will perform exactly as it should even in the event of a fire. So do you need to install low smoke non-halogen cable? If your cable runs through escape routes, connects life safety systems or serves public areas then yes you should. But here's a question. Does a modular wiring system form part of the fixed wiring installation? I'm talking about the plug-in connectors that are going to the accessories. And if not, do they need testing? Well, I've dived into that very question. If you want to find out, then click the video on screen now.